And I've just made up some fake data here just to sort of illustrate um, one possible way you could go through this. So let's pretend that I am doing a project on COVID-19 impacts. So I would, I would start with that. My name, introduce you myself. Hey, my name is Sean. I'm with Team V and we're looking at COVID-19 impacts. My central hypothesis, the main question I'm interested in looking at um, in my capstone is the effect of COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic on how we interact with nature. So I want to know if how we've interacted with nature and the outside world has changed. That's my main hypothesis, but I'm also interested in other factors that might help explain differences. So in particular, I'm, I'm wondering if people's age is going to impact that. I'm wondering if uh, how wealthy they are will impact that. And I'm wondering their geographic location, if that's going to uh, impact how they're uh, going out and about um, in this time of the pandemic. The initial data set I had to work with, we had to work with, our team had to work with, was very messy. There was, there was a lot of uh, strange things we had to talk to our faculty advisors about. There was weird coloration. There were weird um, characters. Not all of the variables were really well understood, so it took a while to, to get a handle on that. Um, it needed a lot of cleaning. I had to do a lot of cleaning. I found several alignment errors, not, not a gazillion, but I definitely found some alignment errors that I had to um, spend several days to, to get fixed. Um, I used OpenRefine, had a problem with it at first, but finally figured out how to make it work. Used OpenRefine to check for any entry errors um, in some of particularly my um, open-ended questions that people filled in. Um, and I had to make several judgment calls. So uh, I wasn't exactly sure how to do this and there were different interpretations. So um, I both talked about this with my overall group and got some input and discussions and feedback. And I also talked to Dr. Wu about this to help me with my decisions. When, I'm, when I was done with those, I actually um, recorded all those that I, that this was my rule for changing things, this is how I change things. Both included that in a different tab on the data sheet um, and also uh, uh, put those in text notes that I'll be able to uh, either put into my methodology or perhaps in my appendix in our final report. Um, uh, so for example, th this, this is one way or one issue that I had, which was uh, the inconsistency that, that people were responding to things, particularly in the open-ended um, questions with the open-ended questions. And so what I decided to do was create um, five general bins, five general categories, and put all of the responses into one of those bins. So I create an additional column and I, I just said the, the response was either about their recreating, a response about their working, um, something about their health, something about uh, going out and about because they had to for caretaking, or they were going about not so much to go outside, but to get to a different location. And then I created another column, and that other column was uh, more specific descriptors uh, that, that were um, much more closer to what the folks originally responded. So I'm going to primarily use these five broad categories for my analyses, because that's how I can um, bin things and, and look at larger patterns. Overall, in terms of the, the data set, it was collected between April and September of this year, I got a total of 347 different responses. So 347 different rows in my data sheet with 32 different variables, 32 different questions that people responded to, um, 32 different rows. For my analysis, my part of our group project, I'm focusing on these particular seven of the 32, and that's uh, activity level, both at the time of the survey and what people estimated their non-pandemic activity level was, how far they've driven or how far they've recently driven the past week now versus how far they would think they'd be driven, driving in a, in a typical week. And then what they uh, felt their health was like uh, now versus um, before the pandemic started. So the activity and the health are on a relativistic scale. So vary from minus three to plus three. And then um, I'm also looking at the last beach that people visited. And uh, I will probably also use some demographic variables, although that, that, that's not uh, my focus for today. Um, so this is, this is my summary stats. This is what I found so far from my data. Um, the current, again, from a range of minus three to completely inactive to plus three, meaning you know super uh, professional athlete type of activity level. Um, uh, and these are means and standard errors. And this is just overall the whole data set. Um, people 
have um, seemed to have been out and about less, so 1.3 versus 2.4. People are driving less, significantly less, uh, about 29 miles in the past week versus um, almost 300 miles in a typical week. And um, people report their health to be, um, uh, they're less healthy uh, now versus pre COVID. The most popular beaches that people reported going to was San, were Santa Monica, Zuma, and Ventura State Beach. Um, I've just begun playing around with some of my visualizations. Here's one. This is looking at over time in terms of the respondents, uh, the beaches that they were going to uh, in different areas of um, the Malibu coast. So this is Ventura over here. This is Los Angeles over here. And just seeing that um, uh, people really seem to have flocked to Ventura, especially um, after the closures in Los Angeles County. So people, so while not everybody was out and about, those that were out and about were definitely looking for beaches. So those are a couple insights I have so far. Again, my, my core hypothesis was, uh, does the has the COVID-19 pandemic changed how we interact with nature? And so far, my initial uh, cleaning and looking at the data suggests that things have indeed changed. My next step is to do more rigorous hypothesis testing, um, try to start correlating some of the um, intensity of responses with demographics, want to work on better visualizations, possibly pulling in some outside data sets and GIS. So for example, I've been seeing a lot of uh, in the last week or so, a lot of published results in newspapers and things about the geographic distribution of, of cases and, and how people are moving. So I might want to try to merge that with our data and see if I can um, see um, if that's an explanatory factor as well. So thanks a lot. And uh, you can check out my website that has my ongoing blog about um, my research. Thanks, you guys.